Hello and welcome to a new video about automation technology, about automation devices and so on. Yeah? Today we want to again talk about the history because, you know, if you know the history, it is clear what happens today or what was the achievement. This is the idea. This time we are really looking into, into detailed what was a process control system. Yeah? How was this working? Well, up to the 1960s, up to the 1960s, it was mainly hand operated. You know, there were some were a gauge, some were a measurement point, some were like this, a display of the measured value, then somewhere else there was a, a handle or a valve or a turning knob or whatever to influence. Yeah? So the personnel had to go there, see what is the current measurement go somewhere, turn, look around the corner, something like this, manual operation in the field. Yeah? There were no automated drives, there were no, no uh, measurements, were just locally there. That's it. Yeah? Of course, you needed a lot of persons. Of course, the complexity of, of, the, of the plants could not be high, yeah, because nobody could ever manage this. Yeah? Those guys, they really needed to know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Then, starting in the 1960s, some important measurements started to be transferred to a local position. Okay, so there was a control room. Uh, centralized control room where all or at the first only some measurements the most important which were considered the most important ones were uh, transferred to to this control room and there was also then remote controls for this and that drive so you turn a knob in the remote in the control room and remotely the actual drive was positioning to a new position However, it was still the same. You have now had it centralized into one place, so you don't need personnel all around in the field. You needed just control persons in the control room. However, they still managed to do this on their own. Yeah, they see, ah, there is a, a measurement wrong, so I turn this knob a little to open and close this valve and so on. They really drove the, the process, okay? they guided the process. This was process control system was the person. Okay? This was in the 1960s. In the 1970s then, you know, semiconductors arrived. Yeah? And there were the possibility then of these control, centralized controllers, who already could manage this and that on their own. Yeah. Also, the first visualizing system started to appear in the 1960s, 1970s because, you know, in the 1960s, in the end, you had a huge control room with hundreds of gauches of displays and, and, and as many switches. You, it was overwhelming, simply. Yeah? Overwhelming. And then, you know, if you could put this into the hands of a computer, of a process, computer, then you could also do something else with visualizing. Yeah? So there was visualizing systems uh, which helped the personnel to get rid of this flood of information, yeah? to focus simply. Yeah? This was then in the 1970s. Yeah? Uh, in the 1980s, yeah? There was then the, the decentralizing. Yeah? Semiconductor prices were reduced. So the, these process computers, they were really, really expensive. Yeah? So you could not just buy some of them. Yeah? However, now they got really, really cheaper. Yeah? So you could have more nodes somewhere in the field, out in the field. And this uh, field, control, field control units arised. Yeah? So I had suddenly some islands in between yeah? and 
the interconnection between those islands, it was done by a bus system. Okay? So I had a control area right there, a control area right there, a control area right there. And now it was also the time to separate the controlling parts from the visualization part. Yeah? Now also it was possible to make not only one central position, yeah? because this was actually the, the trouble in the 1970s. Yeah? In the 1970s when I said, okay, there was a central place where everything was controlled and so on. What if this central place died? Yeah? Had a failure for whatever reason, yeah? then the complete plant was shut down. Yeah? The availability of the plant did go down there. Yeah? To raise the availability of the plant, there was then redundancy concepts as, yeah, we have them too, and so on. However, out of this, yeah, this decentralized things developed, were developed. Yeah? They had a major major disadvantage. Yeah? They were proprietary solutions most of the time. I told you about this. Yeah? So the engineering costs were quite high because if you have an engineer who was an expert in one of these fields, in one of these applications, of the systems, it doesn't really mean you could use it in the next plant because there's another system. It simply was well, simply not working. Yeah? This was a lot of better than in the 1990s. Yeah? Then a lot of those special communication devices and so on, they were uh, replaced, starting with the 1990s, with standard communication. Yeah? Ethernet was, was introduced also in the field. Yeah? So this, this, was, this was then in the 1990s. Uh, so this, these controls in the 80s, they were already pretty rigid. Yeah? They, they were specialized controls, which were robust and so on. They did work yeah? for visualization. The, the persons then used PC or PC-like systems, something like this. And also now, yeah, with this visualization, which only you can focus on the currently important things and so on. Yeah? Now it was possible to really build complex machinery yeah? because, yeah, it was that the, the load was distributed somehow. Yeah? However, in reality, there was only the possibility of a, a size. Yeah? Because all I said, all those communication islands they were interconnected by a field bus system. And at some point in time, the load on the field bus system was simply overwhelming. So it took too long to react, eh? to get the information from there to me, from me to there again. Eh? It simply took too long. So this was the limiting factor back then in the 80s. Like I said, uh, in the 90s then, we had standard components. Eh? the standard office world or standard PC world, standard networking world, pushed into the field of industry, yeah, lowering the prices there, and then they took it, of course. Yeah. And those things then really started also to work. Yeah. Ethernet really kicked in and this, I mean, we're still using it. Yeah. We're still using it. There is no reason for this. Uh, Due to the standardization of communication and so on, uh, it was then easier for an engineer to get an expert in this and switch to another system and switch to another system. It was much easier. So the engineering cost dropped rapidly. Huh? This made the whole automation thing easier and cheaper, simply. Huh? Also, oh, a lot of actuators then in the 2000s and so on, uh, a lot of actuators were then also used with field bus interface already. Yeah? So the, the bus system moved a level down simply yeah? because the field elements were intelligent enough to already drive a bus system, which made additional intelligence in the field possible. Yeah? Now suddenly it's not just move left, move right. Yeah? Suddenly, how fast yeah, 
parameterize those things, yeah? measurements, do calibration, something like this. There can be other information transported than just the information for the process. We can configure those parts suddenly over the network. This will proceed in future, I guess. The, the systems in the field will get more and more intelligence on their own. So they will also start to communicate each other to each other with quite cheap IT components. Say. So this Ethernet, it's my opinion, this Ethernet will go down to the field more and more. There are even systems with, with Linux and Unix and, and also Windows systems go deeper and deeper into the components. Windows C, for instance, how it was called, or is called. This is really, we are really at embedded level now. Huh? Embedded. So this is a controller, this is, it does not even look like a computer. Huh? So it's one chip controller processor, whatever, running Windows there on. This will be. Yeah. And the further integration of, of so-called packages, of interfaces, you know, to enterprise resource planning, ERP systems or, or uh, management execution system and so on. Yeah. This, will, this will be further unified, yes. Yeah. That's the future. So this was a brief history of the development of process control systems. It was pretty similar to the one, two, two videos before. However, like I said, you know the history, you know why it looks like how it looks. But there is a reason. Yeah, there's always a reason. So, next time we're talking about uh, the architecture of process control systems. Uh, there are a bunch of architectures. We are going to talk about the two major ones, one bus architecture and server architecture in detail. Okay? Discover the differences from them. Yeah. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.